Hello YouTube, welcome to the Emporium. My name is Michael. So today's project is something I've been looking forward to for some time. For those of you that follow me on Facebook, you're probably aware that I bought a new winter tent, which is the Cabela's Bighorn 3 wall tent. So I'm very excited to start using this tent, but I do need to produce a stove. So what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is researching stove designs, and I've come up with something I'd like to share with you. This is Fusion 360 from Autodesk. It's a great product for actually modeling different things. I use, actually use this for my 3D printing work. And uh, this is the stove that I've put together. So I'll just give you a 360, and then I'll explain some of the, uh, the features. What I've done is actually designed it as a hexagon. Um, I could have made it out of a smaller barrel. It would have been probably just fine, but I wanted to do something different. A hexagon is easier to assemble. It gives me flexibility to put in different features that I want, and I think it looks great as well. So I'll show you some of the differences with my design that I haven't seen on some of the others perhaps. And uh, again, in the comments, let me know what you think. So first of all, I've got the vent at the front. Uh, it's a four hole vent that has a, a slider, which will be captive. It doesn't actually show it in here very well, but this will be captive with a little handle that you can slide back and forth. Uh, the next feature that I put in is to obviously a door with a simple latch. And this actually overlaps, so I don't know if you can see that, but the door is slightly bigger than the opening, but I might change that on the final design. And in the bottom, what I've done is put in a ash pan that can be withdrawn and you can empty out the ash. So it does take up some of the burn space within the stove and I'm not sure if it's fully needed, but you know what, I'm prototyping it so I can try it. It doesn't work, I can just weld that cover back in. So we take a look at the inside in a cutaway. You'll see what I've done. So at the top here, I've actually put in a baffle to stop the hot gases just escaping straight up the flue. So they'll have to actually wrap around and traverse up. If you can see at the bottom where the tray is, uh, there's I've put some steel bar in there so I can actually put a grate across it. So if I look at some of the measurements overall, so from the front to the rear, the overall length is 24 inches, so it's two feet in length and what I've got in across the diagonals is 15.75 so if I measure across the each piece here you should see it's 7.875 of an inch so that means each section because I'm going to actually produce this in one half so it'll be two clamshells that I put together will be under 24 inches. So that's important because a typical piece of steel is four feet wide. So in order to just use one sheet, um, I can cut all of this from just two foot by four feet wide. And then the rest of the components will come out the remainder of the sheet. So I just want to talk briefly about why the dimensions are the way they are. So I want to make a stove that I could easily make out of a four by eight sheet of steel. I'm using 11 gauge mild steel, so this stove probably won't be very portable, but it will last a long time, it'll be pretty hefty. I may make a lighter weight version of that I can handle easily on my own, and I'll probably use 16 gauge, which I believe is 1.29 millimeters. The length is two feet long, so I intentionally made it quite long, because then it means less chopping of wood, I can put longer pieces in. Uh, I hate short stoves where you have to constantly cut the wood, so splitting wood is not too much of a chore, but actually cutting it to length is what takes the time. You either need a chainsaw or a bow saw, and a lot of energy goes into that. So the longer the piece of wood, the less chopping there is involved. So what I've done here is just printed a 3D model just for my own sanity. I just wanted to see how it looked and whether it scaled correctly, whether the opening seemed to match the overall length of it. And I was actually quite happy with the way it looked in physical 3D. So next step is going to be part two, 
where I'm going to go ahead and build the stove. Hopefully with some of your good ideas I find in the comments and I'll remove any features that you think are just not needed. So until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.